Hello guys, this is Arpan Gupta and in this video I will talk about the foundation of quantum machine learning which is quantum physics of course and quantum physics actually describes the behavior of very small particles like atom and electron etc. So we know that matter is made of atoms and atoms have electrons in them and it also have other particles microscopic particles. We, we will consider electron and we will discuss about the quantum physics and understand what quantum behavior does this electron show. It is a matter of course, but it still shows some wave like properties like interference and diffraction. In quantum computing and quantum machine learning something called qubit is very important concept. So let us represent a bit using an electron. So we will consider an electron in a hydrogen atom. The energy of electron in an atom is that means the electron can take certain discrete energy levels. It can stay in some fixed and discrete energy levels. It cannot stay between any two consecutive energy levels. It can have only those fixed energy levels which are very discrete. These are not continuous. So let us consider a hydrogen atom where we allow an electron to be in two states. One is the ground state and the other is excited state. Ground state has low energy and excited state will have high energy. So when you give the energy to the electron, it excites and go from ground state to excited states. An electron can come back from excited to ground state when it releases the energy. So in classical ways, we can think of an electron can stay in two states ground or excited at a time at any given point of time. We can encode the bit by saying if the electron is in ground state then it is 0 bit and if it is an excited state first excited state then it is 1. The value of that bit is 1. But this is not the reality and quantum mechanics tells us that something else happens when electron is neither in ground or excited state but it is in the superposition of these two states. So at any given point of time, we cannot say the electron is in ground state or excited state. Quantum mechanics tells us that it can be in either of these with certain probabilities. So let us say alpha is the probability of electron in the ground state and let us say beta is the probability of electron in the excited state, first excited state. So these are probabilities. And you, uh, these probabilities normalize that means alpha square plus beta square will be equal to 1. That means it, it will be in either of these two states, but the probability can be different of in the ground state or in the excited state. So there is something called wave function. Let us say alpha times the wave function in the ground state plus beta times the wave function in the ground in the excited state. So it is alpha 0 plus beta 1 wave function that is the superposition of the two wave functions. So 0 is the wave function in the ground state and 1 will be the electron being in the excited state. So alpha 0 plus beta 1 is a complete wave function which gives us the information on what is the probability of finding this electron at any given state. So alpha will be the probability of electron in the ground state and beta will be the probability of electron in the excited state and 0 and 1 are the wave functions in the ground state and the excited state. So this is the superposition, these are superposition of the two states 0 and 1. So this is a called a qubit similar to bit in classical ways. So qubit is a two state quantum mechanical system. Other examples could be the spin of the electron in which the two levels can be taken as a spin up and a spin down. So at any given point of time you can say it is a superposition of two states spin up and spin down and the, there are certain probabilities of being into spin up and spin down. So when you are not looking or when you are not measuring where the electron is, it remains in the superposition state that is it can be in either state. 
but only when you do the measurement when you look at the electron the electron makes up its mind to go into either of these two states so until or unless you don't measure the electron the probability of finding an electron is different at different locations but you don't know exactly at which location it will be you can only tell about the probability of finding that electron at a given location until you measure the moment you measure it you know very precisely very exactly at which it is at which state it is so you can beforehand you can only tell the probability is finding that electron So what makes quantum computer fast? It is not the qubits which you use instead of a bit in classical computers, but it is the qubits material from which it is made. The devices some of the devices which are being used for qubits are superconducting loops trapped ions silicon quantum dots topological qubits and diamond vacancies in all of these there is some state which can be flipped from one to another at a very lightning speed in a classical transistor cmos transistor generally the speed of switching is in the order of nanosecond on and off state whereas in all these devices the switching speed from one state to the other another when you do the measurement is in the order of femtosecond so these switching speed in quantum world makes these devices faster and the processing speed of the data can be made faster by using these devices the research is still going on on making them faster and so that these work can be done on large scale of computation i hope you have liked this video thanks for watching this video bye bye